Lamar Jackson is the right quarterback for the Ravens to close out this season to save John Harbaugh's job. I got to tip my hat to John Harbaugh. They're using this kid to save his job, and they're running it down people's throat. This past Sunday is the first time I felt like Lamar looked like a dynamic runner. First time I was like, oh, okay, I see the little Vic. You uh, got a tall Vic out here. Yeah. I, saw, I yeah. saw a little of that this week. Earlier, I, I hadn't seen that. Uh, but is he a franchise quarterback? Man, man, he had 18 carries again uh, this past weekend. It's just too much. And, and eventually, they're going to catch him. Um, there's something to zigging when everyone else is zagging. And everyone is out there throwing the ball and throwing it at accelerated rates to the point where it can even come back to haunt those teams that are pass happy. If you're committed to the running game, he's a franchise quarterback. If you're committed to a playbook that's going to be signature, Lamar Jackson, and personnel decisions around that same commitment, he's a franchise quarterback. We all know the benefits of the run game. You tell me this all the time. And I want to fight it because the passing game is just so much easier. Like, do you want to run for five yards? You just want to throw a little short pass and get seven. Uh, I, I, I understand the benefits of the passing game, but the benefits of the running game have not gone away. Time of possession. And it's going to give a jolt of energy to your defense. I don't care what team you're on. Yep. If we're pounding the ball, oh, it's going to feel great on the other side of the ball if I'm a defender. On top of how it defeats a team that's trying to deal with this. So if they are committed to Lamar Jackson and this isn't just a one-off, yes, he's a franchise quarterback. I think Lamar's a franchise quarterback. If they commit to this style of play, this type of offense, uh, whether it's pistol, wildcat, regardless of what, he still has to make Good decisions, whether he's handing it off, whether he's pulling it, whether he's, uh, you know, they're, they're faking it and bootlegging it, whatever they des- decide to do within the offense because they're not pushing the ball down the field. Everything is, you know, short passes, get it out of his hands quick. But it's confusing and it's working. I don't know how long it can last as far as the plays that you can come up with and put together to continue to, to look this dynamic. But... If you got the right coaches in place, which, which, in which you know Marty Morningwig has done a great job, and, and 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 Greg Roman, I mean they can do this for a long time, and then they can just continue to expand the offense and continue to do more and more, and who knows where it can go. So I would say, as of right now, Baltimore is in a really good place at, at the quarterback position. Yeah, you're right, and and it's a band aid for these guys, which I think most of us will take that band aid to stop bleeding mm-hmm. in a second. <laughs> and you know, like you said, uh, Marcellus, on the defense side of the ball. I'm okay with the quarterback run, especially when you're young and the game is still fast when you can't figure out coverages and you're still kind of working your way in. The quickest way to get away from everything is using your legs. You can get you out of any problem you have. You know, guys dropping back, linebackers, DBs dropping back, not expecting your quarterback to run. He takes off run and gets you that big first down to keep the drive moving. The defense, we're jumping up or down on the sidelines. We're happy as hell. This is the problem. What's going to start happening? Defense is going to get smarter. They're going to start spying him. A D lineman going to stay in there. A linebacker going to stay in there and start spying him when they're going to force him to throw the ball. Then he's still going to try to try to run the ball and get hit too many times. He's going to start getting hurt. That's what we've seen out of RG3. We've seen out of a lot of these quarterbacks early that we thought that were just going to be the next best thing. And what happens is, especially, especially with these running quarterbacks, these hits add up. I couldn't yeah. wait to see a running quarterback that I actually didn't get a chance to have a shot on because I know that that one shot might not hurt him, but next time he runs the ball, he's going to be thinking in the back of his head, I'm going to get hit. I got to get out of bounds. I got to throw this ball away. They're fine for it right now. The defense is playing well. They got some studs on the, on, on the, defense, on the defense line. They got a great defense to go out there and get a job done, and that can get you some games and win you some football games. But what's going to happen is – when those hits start to add up, that's when the problem's going to kick in. Well, I don't want to go injury. I remember we had a great conversation, number supporting it, where we always say that the safest place on the football field is in the pocket. Until you see a Peyton Manning go down, and he had to miss his entire season yep. plus. You see a Tom Brady miss his season. Then you see mobile quarterbacks. There's an RG3 that got injured. Uh, we could talk about a, a Aaron Rodgers has been injured. But there's no safe place on that football field. Let's just be real. Now, you're going to play with the percentages? I get that. I love the fact that this team, in four of their five last ball games, they have run for 200 plus yards. Like Barry Switzer wishbone numbers. And then in the one that they didn't, they had 194. Controlling tempo, dictating terms, 
keeping me off script because if I'm a pass-happy team or a traditional team in today's NFL, guess what happens? I don't know what to do. You are just shrinking my time and my opportunities and my possessions. They're doing a magnificent job of this, but the commitment, because this is not sexy ball, and there's a lot of people in the organization have to sign off on this type of ball, which is ground and pound, which is usually not sustainable I, in today's I tell you game. what, the, that, the Baltimore Ravens defense is enjoying every minute of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been yeah, a lot absolutely. of offenses where you come, we, we'll come out in, in Philly, and I love playing with Andy, pass happy. We'll throw it three plays in a, three plays in a row. I might throw three incompletions, and the defense is right back out. Mm. You know, you... Three runs, three first downs, or two runs and a couple. For, I mean, how it, it comes into play, these guys are getting rest and they're well rested. But this is the thing that that I know will potentially happen um, for the Baltimore Ravens going into the offseason. Teams will have a chance to sit down and say, "Okay, what did they do?" And they'll look at it, and they'll the first four teams, you know, they may have to play a game plan strictly for this. So it it's, it's good for right now. In the future, you know, they will have. To I make think changes. it's going to be. They're going to get their come up it's even quicker, probably this weekend. They've played five of the eight worst run defenses during his start. Say it. They're about to play the San Diego Chargers. LA in a Chargers. They represent. Yeah. <laughs> the LA Chargers <laughs> in a serious defense. I still say San Diego. I think there's going to be a problem this weekend. Yeah. 